Uh, hello, this is Paramjit Singh from paramjitsingh.com. Uh, we are going to talk about today about fear, anxiety and panic. Since we are in the middle of an outbreak, it might be useful for us to actually understand how these emotions impact us physically, mentally. And if we can use these emotions to our advantage, we can help right through this challenge we are all experiencing at the same time. So fear, anxiety, and panic, they all drive certain parts of the brain, which uh, increases stress. And the stress, especially if it is chronic, can lead to various uh, um, issues, uh, depresses our immune system, which we need the most to work through this challenge we have right now. It compromises our ability to, to make better decisions. So managing stress, managing fear, uh, managing panic can be one of the very um, important preventative methods uh, to work through these issues we have, in addition to all the safety and precautions suggested by the public health uh, agencies of Canada and world over. Please follow everything, be safe and be cautious and see if you can work with your mind uh, slightly more efficient and skillful way to work through this whole process. So I'm going to share with you a very simple technique which can help you manage or moderate your uh, fear, anxiety, and all attending emotions that might be going through your mind. Uh, and the technique is mindfulness, which you might have heard uh, from a variety of resources. Uh, from the purpose of this recording, uh, we are going to just simply focus on the aspect of the mindfulness which uh, direct us to think about it as a way of training of mind. So usually it is a three-step process which allows us to use our mind a more, lot more skillfully. And the first step is to observe whatever is happening. So for example, if you are experiencing a fear, uh, our automatic reaction would be to stay away from it, push away, or di distract us to do certain other things so that we don't feel it. But mindfulness practices encourage us to to observe whatever really is going on in front of us in the moment. And then the second step is to acknowledge the experience, even if it is unpleasant. Uh, for example, the experience acknowledging that you are afraid or you're panicky or you're fearful is not a pleasant experience. So instead of running away from it, mindfulness practice just suggests see if you can take a moment to just simply acknowledge it and not run away from it because it is happening anyway. And the third part is to, which is actually the most important interventional part of the whole process is that how you respond to that experience. If you respond to the experience in a very conventional way, you're going to get a conventional result, which means either uh, flight or fear or more anxiety. Uh, but if you work with that experience slightly different way, that instead of reacting you to it immediately, you take a moment, you pause, you just don't react to that for a moment, even if it is for a moment, you have suddenly shifted the way you have uh, felt the experience. So this is the most important, yet also the most challenging aspect of the practice. Um, observing, acknowledging, and possibly not reacting, at least immediately. And if you have to react, you can react after a moment and that reaction will have a different quality than if you did so automatically. And all this happens in the larger scheme of understanding that things are always temporary, which means things come and go. Uh, emotion comes, however powerful the emotion is, it is going to come, it will stay for a moment or two or more, but eventually it will dissipate and pass on and something else will take its place. So this is a step, a three-step process which uh, generally can be powerful way to manage strong emotions during challenging time. So I'm going to uh, shift now, this is a uh, shift gears to uh, the practical aspect of the practice because we all know reaction doesn't help but we need to change the way brain functions. So uh, during good times we all have a moment to pause but it's only when we are challenged that our automatic part of the brain takes over. So this is where the actual experiential aspect of the mindfulness comes in. 
So for a moment, in order for us to train our mind to be more intentional, deliberative, non-reactive, purposeful, we have to have an object. An object has to be within our body and mind. Uh, so let's pick something which is very common to us. Uh, we all breathe. So let's uh, pick our breath. Sit comfortably in whichever way you want to sit. Lie down if you need to lie down. Uh, whatever you do, you should be able to breathe comfortably. There should not be any constraints on your breathing. That's the bottom line. Uh, you don't have to sit in a ramrod position. Uh, whichever way you can sit, that's perfect. Or lie down. And bring your attention to your breath. So for the purpose of training, breath now is an object. And we are going to to work with any experience that comes in response to paying attention to the breath. So you can choose to pay attention to the breath in your stomach. That's a large surface area, surface area which you cannot miss. So bring your attention to your um, stomach and notice that each time breath comes in, stomach moves. Each time breath goes out, stomach moves again. Your task for the next few moments, so just simply Observe this whole process. Breath comes in, you notice it has arrived. Breath goes out, you notice it has left. So that's the first step of the of the learning process, observing. And the second, uh, second step will come in play when you actually start to pay attention. You notice a lot of things will come to your mind. You will start to notice fears, worries, thoughts, uh, maybe things you have to do, things you're worried about will show up. And that's the experience that's happening in this moment. So the second step is for a moment of uh, purpose of experiment and curiosity. See if you just simply notice that whatever comes to your mind. Just acknowledge it. Even if it sounds counterintuitive, just acknowledge that you're experiencing that. And then, if it is particularly unpleasant, try not to react to it, at least immediately. Take a moment if you have to react, or just create a pause. Um, and then, notice how things come and go. If you do this, you will notice that the thought which really were threatening to sweep you away uh, is no longer there. Something else has shown up. And, and as you continue to breathe, keep your focus on the breath. Remember to keep your focus on the breath. Breath comes in, you notice it has arrived in the stomach. Breath goes out, you notice it has left the stomach. There's no other expectations from you. There's no expectation that you will feel relaxed or not. There's no expectation that you feel this way or that way. What we are trying to learn is to how to manage the mind and what happens in it at any given moment. And, and work with it from a standpoint of a non-reactive uh, way of doing things. So just breath comes in, goes out, comes in, goes out. Just notice it. And you're not regulating your breath. You're not doing anything um, to change its length or breadth or depth. Whichever way breath wants to come in, you notice it has arrived. Whichever way it goes out, you notice it has left. And if you do that, you will notice that uh, any time you do not respond to the same situation in the same way, you shift the automatic behavior uh, to a healthier direction. So, for example, if a fear comes to your mind and for the purpose of curiosity and experimentation within this uh, exercise, you don't respond to that fear or to that habit or that to anxious moment, you have suddenly shifted your relationship to that. Suddenly it becomes very empowering that you can work with something which is, uh, which is uh, you have cap capability to do that. And each one of us has that capability and that capability is called awareness. So you use your awareness to pay attention to what is happening in your mind and then use that observation to change the way you respond to that behavior. And if you keep on doing it, you start to notice that your old habit patterns will start to shift to become more healthier patterns. And that's essentially what the practice and how the practice works. So you, you focus on an object which is within you, for example, a breath, 
and then you keep on paying attention to it and everything that bothers you in the form of thoughts emotions feelings will show up in your mind and when you work with those whatever shows up in a slightly different way you start to notice that now your habit patterns have started to change and that's how we work with the fear anxiety and panic uh in addition to all other things remember that uh, it's very much possible that you may be uncomfortable as you work through this process but uncomfortableness or the discomfort is always a process of learning new skills you are learning a skill and skill learning is always uncomfortable so please do not be distracted by the fact that you have to be relaxed you may be you may be uncomfortable as you're working uh through this process and working on your mind but remembering that if you're willing to work uh on your mind and be uncomfortable for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes and that will change your habit patterns and the way you react to the things that will make your life comfortable outside of those 10 or 20 minutes that's the best return to investment process you will ever see so please do not try to be comfortable let the things happen as they just change your uh, reaction to that and that will uh, over the period of time as you become more skillful you will be able to deal with all the things that comes to your mind remember this is a skill it takes time to practice it doesn't happen overnight but if you actually take a more practical approach to it that this is a skill i'm learning you are more likely to be successful in learning new patterns of doing the same old stuff so try this breath remember acknowledge uh, observe acknowledge don't react and understand things are always temporary see if you can work with this for a few a few minutes every day so try it and you're most welcome to get in touch with me if you need more information but remember we all have a capability within us to change the way we react to the things and the way we perceive things and the way we work with all the challenges that life throws at us good luck be safe during this process and keep others safe